Humeral Intraosseous Needles. Here's how to keep them in and keep them straight. I am a huge fan of intraosseous access and humeral IOs are quick to place and you can infuse fluids more rapidly than through tibial access and drugs may even reach the heart faster in cardiac arrest through a humeral IO than through a brachial IV. You can access them in transport when you're at the head end of the patient in a helicopter or a road ambulance, but changes in arm position can cause them to become dislodged. And this was noted way back in 2011 by authors from the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit who said you need to keep the arm in neutrally rotated position and adducted. And it be can become dislodged if the patient's arm is lifted above their head or forcefully rotated or abducted excessively. And that was thought to be due to abutment against the acromion. And we also noticed in our Sydney Hems practice, our pre-hospital patients, some of them had dislodgements of the IO needle, especially after abducting the arm for thoracostomy. Now, last year, the trauma guys from the Alfred in Melbourne published about their cruciform position for trauma resuscitation, which is a great way to facilitate what they call horizontal resuscitation, allowing multiple simultaneous procedures from having access to both sides of the chest. And that's incidentally something we also advocate in our pre-hospital management of traumatic cardiac arrest because it facilitates bilateral open thoracostomies. But because of our experience, we wrote to the journal saying that the cruciform trauma position was a great idea, but we just offered a warning to be careful when you abduct the arm if all you have for access at that stage is one or more humeral IOs. So dislodgement is one thing. But then we identified another problem when we managed a trauma case. We had a patient whom we RSI'd through an IO needle and then did thoracostomies after abducting and externally rotating the arm. So abduction and external rotation. This resulted in a deformed IO needle bent at the point of entry into the bone, which we first identified on the chest X-ray, and then it was confirmed on removing the needle. So we reported that in the literature. We'd now identified two problems with arm positioning, dislodgement and deformation of the IO needle. But we were curious, is it purely from abduction of the arm with abutment against the acromion, or is it abduction and external rotation? So we took this curiosity to the cadaver lab and experimented on several cadavers, uh, each with two arms. We tried abducting the arm in a position of neutral rotation with the thumbs neither up nor down. We tried abducting the arm in a position of internal rotation with the thumb pointing down. And we abducted the arm in a position of external rotation with the thumb pointing up. And here's what we found. Here's an example of us abducting the arm in neutral rotation. Appears to be good. Doesn't come out easily. I have to use the lure lock technique so it's not being dislodged. And on examination of the needle, it remains straight. So abduction wasn't the issue if you have neutral rotation. Here's an external rotation example. Fine in abduction, but then we externally rotate. Look what's happening. You can see it's being dislodged. Easy to just pull out. It's no longer fixed in bone and it's clearly bent. Here's abducting the arm with internal rotation. So keeping the thumbs down. Once again, the needle seems to be well placed. It's not being dislodged. And on unscrewing it from the bone, we see if it's been deformed, and no, it remains straight. So neutral position, internal rotation position, both appear to be fine. And here's one final example of another arm of abduction with external rotation. So we're going to do elbow flexion, abduction, external rotation. Watch the IO. Did you hear that? Yeah. So you hear that popping out of the bone? And then we go back in. And look at that, it's completely dislodged. Yeah. So you don't even need the lower to get it off, you'll see it's just out, it's yeah. immediately bent, yeah. yeah. non-functional. So in summary, humeral intraosseous is still a brilliant way 
to obtain resuscitative vascular access. But you need to be careful when you move the patient's arms. Abduction with external rotation causes both dislodgement and deformation of the IO needle. So if you need to position the arm for thoracostomy, then think scarecrow or gangster or dislike, whatever helps you remember to have the thumbs pointing down so that you're doing your thoracostomies with this arm position, the thumbs pointing down, internal rotation. And if you do that, your humeral intraosseous needles will stay in and they will stay straight.